So I grew up eating Pakistani food from my mother in Canada, but I always wondered, how does it compare to food actually from Pakistan? Triangle parathas. I've seen circle ones before. I've seen some square ones, but how would you even make a triangle one? I don't know why we always slurp chai. I find it tastes better when you slurp it. It's almost like the Japanese when they eat ramen. If you slurp your noodles, it just tastes that much better. And I think it's the same concept with chai. I landed in the capital city, Islamabad, and I had anda parata for breakfast, which is basically a spicy omelet and a crispy flatbread. It was pretty much the same thing that I would have back home. All right, I'm here with Osama. He's going to be my tour guide for this whole journey. Osama, where are we going right now? We are going to explore the most beautiful areas of Pakistan, Hunza and Skirdu. Before we go to Hunza, we got to stop in Naran, which is so beautiful they don't even want to put it on this map. So this is about nine hours away and then we go to Hunza. I left around 8.30 a.m. and I'm super jet lagged and I still can't believe I'm finally in Pakistan. I always saw those amazing photos of Hunza and Skaradu and the diverse foods up north and just looking at the mountains and the greenery made me second guess if that was actually in Pakistan or not. We're getting a bit hungry so our first stop before Naran is in Balakot. There's this bazaar with the famous chapli kebab spot, and I guess this is more of a teaser because we'll be tasting the original chapli kebab when we go to Peshawar. It's basically a mix of beef, green chilies, tomatoes, cilantro, chili powder, garam masala, and my favorite, bone marrow. Then it's deep fried in beef fat. In 2005, there was an earthquake in Pakistan, and this city of Balakot was the most affected area. The whole city had to have been rebuilt, but the locals say the taste of this shop remains the same. So it's super crispy on the outside and they put bone marrow on the inside as well, which is really nice. I would like it a bit more spicy, but it's still very juicy. It's not dry at all. You want it to be more spicy? Yeah, just a bit. Oh, the lime helps. If I had to rate this, I'd say this is a solid 9.2 out of 10. Like it's really up there. But let's see what Peshawar has in store. And the one thing that I'm quickly learning, just like back home in Canada, every meal can't be complete without a good cup of chai. It is good, yes. I like how they add enough sugar. Like a lot of people, they don't add enough sugar, but you need sugar in chai. Patti dhokke, chini dhokke. Excessive tea, less sugar. That's the best tea ever. <laughs> I definitely didn't have any chapli kebabs like that back in Canada, so this was a win. We're now back on the road towards Naran. So, so you're saying this is like a teaser right now, like this isn't even the spot that's yes, gonna this shock is me. Teaser. How are you feeling right now, by the way? I love the hills. I love the hills, yeah. and what about this bridge? <laughs> <laughs> it's a bit shaky. No, it's not really shaky, so it's not really that bad. It is shaking. <laughs> oh, <All right. laughs> Okay, so this is a bit shaky. I didn't think it was gonna shake that much. Also, I know this is supposed to be a food tour, but when you're doing a road trip in northern Pakistan, you can't just ignore all of these beautiful sights. From the greeneries, the mountains, valleys, I had to stop so many times just so I can take it all in. Even when we stopped for a Friday prayer, we found this mosque to be built just on the edge of a cliff. Everything here is just so beautiful. We are in... Naran. So we made it. We made it finally. Job. We are here after a, a long journey. The view is kind of lacking. I think maybe for the last three days, I've only had like eight hours of sleep. And we're gonna go to Moon Restaurant. They're pretty famous for their chicken karai and malai boti. We make chicken karai at home, but not like this. This is an actual karai. And the plan is for me to try to make it just like he did. And he has a jet engine as a stove. I wanna see how close I can actually even try to make it compared to his. So here it is, chicken karai, which is basically a type of chicken curry and you already know it's a very popular dish in Pakistan. The key thing here is this type of pan or pot that they use which is called a karai and it's pretty much like a wok. It goes on high heat flame and these chefs quickly rotate the karai with steel tongs, both of which are heavy so it takes a lot of skill to master and handle successfully. And to clarify, I'm not a chef, I'm not a cook, I'm just a home cook that grew up eating chicken karai so I know what it should taste like but let's see if I can actually make it using a karai. So we just added oil, salt, and we threw in the chicken. And this is really hard to use. Like this little tong here. Because this is also super heavy. And these guys make it look so easy. The way they just mix it. And they also rotate this at the same time. And the oil just splatters everywhere if you're not careful. Tiny bit of haldi. 
How do you say it hurts in Urdu? Yeah, dar ho gaya. Mera hat. I mean, some strong hands, man. Right? Okay, so now we don't have a spoon anymore. We got some sort of spatula here. Some green chilies and some sliced ginger. <laughs> this one's so easy. <laughs> now we got some cream. It's so hot. My eyes are pretty much tearing up right now. And there are no onions in here. It's just the heat. And now we're going to add a bit of black pepper too. Yeah, like this takes a lot of skill. It's good. It's over us. There's a big difference between how they make it here and the way we make it back home. Over here they use a lot of oil and it's almost as if they fry it. But it's so very juicy and it's spicy. Yeah, that's spicy, yeah? No, it's not no. spicy. No. I think I just got a pepper in my throat. Every bite you're getting a lot of the masala because it's all stuck on the actual chicken meat and it's not really sliding up into the gravy. The way he was spinning that, that was yeah. so tricky and hard. Yeah, he has to go. I think everyone has diabetes back home, but over here, they do not care about sugar. Like, they add a lot in here. Yeah, it's good. It's also nice to see that they make their own naan here and have a tandoor oven. I always wanted a tandoor oven because it really gives naan a nice, crispy outside while remaining soft on the inside. A lot of people ask me what I enjoy making the most, and I'd have to say anything with dough, like naan, roti, and paratas. It always feels nice to just zone out while working and shaping the dough. And when I saw this tandoor, I said to myself, I need to try this. So like this is more than 500 degrees for sure. Oh, that feels hot, man. <laughs> Let me see you do it first. Go do it. Go do it. Okay. Okay, hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Hold on. Oh, yo, this is hot. Yep. This hand. Boom. Yep. Right. So here. Nope. <laughs> it didn't stick on. Go, go. Oh, well, nah. <laughs> They're also serving up some malai boti, which is basically chicken marinated in cream, yogurt, and a whole bunch of different masalas. It's then cooked over hot coals. I'm also noticing everyone here loves barbecue, especially cooking over charcoal. Kitna sal se banare hai. Banare hai. Chesa. Chesa. I'm working on it. So he's been doing this for about six years, and you can tell he knows what he's doing just by the way he screwed those whole chicken wings. I'm sure if I try this, it's gonna be already off the skewer. I have so much more respect to anybody who uses a wok or a karai because that stove is super hot and my fingers are already sore from trying to rotate the pan and also stir the chicken, so. Oh man, but that tandoor oven was hot too. I don't think they have any arm hair because if they're doing that all day, their hair is being burnt off. Yeah, my- Stop waxing and join that. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, no need to wax anymore. Just go buy a tandoor. Much respect to our MVP driver right here, Irfan Bai. Kaise ho? <laughs> I'm gonna get some much needed rest at the hotel and then tomorrow we are back on the road headed to Hunza. Until then, check out some nice b-roll shots of my first day. These sights are amazing. I do like this place when nobody's around here. Hype is created about this place, so every, everybody stops here. It's overhyped. Yes, overhyped. <laughs>